I am Ben with the BTC Sessions. I am here in a very snowy Calgary, Alberta, Canada, and today I'm here to speak with you about the top five things you should know when getting into Bitcoin. There's recently been a relatively large run up in the price, and with that comes a lot of new and curious people. So I figured this week would be a perfect opportunity to do a crash course in how to get started. Um, now I'm going to be making reference to a bunch of other resources during this video. I will link that all down below. Let's get started. Number one, what is Bitcoin? Now, there is a long and short answer to this question, but to sum it up quickly, Bitcoin is a way of sending value anywhere on the planet nearly instantly for minimal fees. It is uncensorable. There are a lot of resources uh, that are available to check out this question itself. Um, I'm gonna make reference to just a few, okay? So first is the what is Bitcoin video. This is just a couple minute video that sums up what Bitcoin is and what it can do. Um, I will link that down below. Now, if that was too short for you and you need a little bit more detail, uh, one of the best videos and most in-depth videos considering how short it is uh, I've ever seen just came out last week and it is called How Cryptocurrencies Work and it's by a group called SciShow. I will link that down below as well. Now if you watch that video and you're either confused or you want more information, where I started was a video series called How I Learned to Stop Worrying and Love Crypto. Uh, this is a series of 30 to 45 minute videos that get very in depth with the mechanics behind Bitcoin and where the technology could lead. And finally, there is a speaker by the name of Andreas Antonopoulos. Uh, he is a very talented and well-spoken person and he travels the globe speaking to people about Bitcoin and telling them about how the technology works and where it may be headed. All of his videos are really, really fantastic and I highly recommend checking them out. Number two, how to get a Bitcoin wallet. Now, I've done a few videos on this subject. Uh, there are a lot of Bitcoin wallets available for your phone or for your computer. And it's important to realize that a Bitcoin wallet essentially is just giving you access to the Bitcoin network. Think of it like your web browser. There's a lot of different web browsers that give you access to the internet. You can use Chrome or Firefox or Safari. All of them do the same thing, they just let you get on the internet. And all of these wallets do the same thing, they just let you get on the Bitcoin network. The one I would recommend the most is something by the name of Copay. It's available for Apple and it's available for Android. Uh, it's very, very user friendly. I did a video and I will link to it here. Uh, other honorable mentions are Bread Wallet for iOS and Mycelium, which I prefer to use on Android. Number three, how to buy Bitcoin. Just like the last point, there are a lot of options when it comes to buying Bitcoin. Uh, the first one I'm gonna speak about is online exchanges. Uh, I did a video on one Canadian exchange by the name of Quadriga CX. There are a lot of different exchanges and it really depends on where you're from. But if you check out my video on Quadriga, the experience on most online exchanges should be very similar, if not the same. For online exchanges, you basically just provide your information to the exchange and you're able to link up your bank account or credit card and buy Bitcoin that way instantly online. Another way to buy Bitcoin is through Bitcoin ATMs. There may or may not be a Bitcoin ATM in your city. I'm lucky enough to have seven in mine. And basically what these are, these are machines. You go in, you put in cash, you get out Bitcoin. Uh, they're pretty simple to use. I did do a video on one. I will link that down below. The last way I'm going to mention is a website by the name of Local Bitcoins. Uh, with Local Bitcoins, all you're doing is you're finding somebody in your town or city that has Bitcoin that wants to sell it. 
Um, with all of these methods, there are advantages and disadvantages. With online exchanges, you're giving up your anonymity. With the ATMs and local Bitcoins, you're likely gonna be paying a bit of a premium for that service. So it's up to you, you have to weigh the options and decide whether the premium is worth the anonymity. Number four, how to spend Bitcoin. There are a lot more options to spend Bitcoin than there were just a few short years ago. Um, I'm gonna go through just a few of them that I think are worth mentioning. The first one is purse.io, and this is a way that you can buy anything you like on Amazon and get a discount. The way it works is that you are being linked up with somebody, perhaps from a place where it may be more difficult to obtain Bitcoin. Uh, you give that person your wish list on Amazon, they buy it for you, and you factor in the discount that you prefer. Relating back to our last topic, if you happen to be from one of these places where it is harder to get Bitcoin, then purse.io may be for you because then you can be buying Bitcoin just by buying something on Amazon.com. Another option to spend Bitcoin is a website by the name of overstock.com. These guys were one of the first websites to accept Bitcoin. They have just about anything you could want and they ship all over the planet. I highly recommend checking them out. A lot of other retailers have accepted, have started accepting Bitcoin as well. You can head over to Expedia, to Dell, to Microsoft. All of these places accept Bitcoin online and are worth checking out as well. And the last way to spend Bitcoin that I'm going to talk about is pretty broad. They are called Bitcoin Visa Debit Cards, and a lot of companies provide them now. You can go to Coinpace, or Zappo, or Wirex, or Bitwalla, and all these companies provide Visa Debit Cards that you can fund with Bitcoin. It's pretty simple, you get an app on your phone, you can load up your card instantly with Bitcoin. Uh, it converts it to your local currency. Number five, how to save and secure your Bitcoin. I'm just gonna talk about two options here, paper wallets and hardware wallets. I've done videos on both. Paper wallets are essentially a piece of paper that can store your Bitcoin uh, offline so that nobody can use your currency unless they have that piece of paper. Second, I'd like to make reference to hardware wallets. These are devices that need to be plugged into your computer or phone in order to spend your funds. That means it makes it perfect for your long-term savings. A number of companies have made Bitcoin hardware wallets. Uh, some of the top ones are Ledger, KeepKey, and Trezor. And the last thing I'd like to say as far as securing your Bitcoin is please never leave your Bitcoin in an online exchange. These online exchanges are new and they are susceptible to hacking and it's an easy way to potentially lose your Bitcoin. It's always safer to store it yourself, do your research, and find out how to do that. That's very important if you're going to have any large amount of Bitcoin lying around. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys found this very helpful in getting you started with Bitcoin. Please don't forget to hit like and subscribe, drop a tip if you're able to, and share this video with anyone you think may benefit or any of your friends that are now starting to get curious about Bitcoin after that price increase. I will see you guys next time on the Bitcoin Sessions.